Now, this is another one of David's passion. He brings the ark to Jerusalem. But what's the problem? The ark is in a tent. Where is David living? David is living in a palace of cedar. I always wondered how that smelled. But anyways, David is living in a palace of cedar. And David says, God, in chapter 7, he says, God, you're living in a tent and I'm living in a cedar palace. I want to build a house for God. And so David says this thing, I want to build a house for God. But what happens is there's a play on words there with this term bait. Remember how he said bait lechem was house of bread? Bait means house or bait el means house of el. David says, I want to build God a bait. I want to build God a house. I want to build God a temple. I'm going to build God a temple. And then what does God do? God comes down and says, David, you're not going to build me a temple. Because David, basically you're a man of blood. And your son Shlomo, Solomon, will, who is a man of Shalom, he will build the house for me. But God says, David, you want to build me a house, a temple? God says, David, I will build you a house. But when God uses the term house, there's a play on words there. He doesn't mean he will build a temple for David. When he says, I will build a house for you, David, what he's saying is, I will build you a descendants, your descendants. In other words, your descendants, your house will be your descendants. And your descendants, David, will sit on the throne of David. Your descendants will sit. I'm going to build you a descendant such that your sons will sit on the throne of David forever over Israel. Ultimately, who is going to be the son of David then? Ultimately, who is the son of David? Who sits on the throne? Who is that one who is to build David a house forever? It's Jesus Christ. So this is called the Davidic covenant. This is really... This is really important. Let me just back up. What covenants have we had so far? We've had the Abrahamic covenant, and God promised Abraham. What did he promise him? Land, the seed would be multiplied, and he'd be a blessing to all nations. We've had the Sinaitic covenant, where they went to Sinai, and God gave them his law, his law of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not you know, do murder, thou shalt not commit adultery. And he gives them his law. That was the Sinaitic Covenant. So you had the Abrahamic Covenant, then you had the Sinaitic Covenant giving the law, and now you've got the third covenant saying, yeah, you're going to bless all nations, and how is it going to be administered? David, I'm going to make your house, your descendants, your line is going to rule over Israel forever. This is the Davidic Covenant, and this points straight to Jesus. Okay, This points straight to Jesus, and Jesus will be the son. By the way, David will, Jesus will be called the what? The son of David? When Jesus goes into Jerusalem riding a donkey, what will they say to him? Hosanna, Hosanna, the son of David. Okay? And they'll call Jesus, is called the son of David. Basically, he's the Messiah. That's the one they hope would rule over Israel. So, anyways, this is called the Davidic covenant in this play on terms. David wants to build God a house. God says, I'll build you a house. By the way, did Nathan the prophet get it wrong here? Nathan the prophet told David, go ahead and build a temple. And then God stepped in and says, wait a minute, wait a minute, Nathan, you got that wrong. So God actually corrects Nathan the prophet here. But anyways, it's a beautiful passage here. This is the Davidic covenant. This is one of the three major covenants in the Old Testament. It's really something. Now David hates evil. David's hatred of evil. And here, when the Amalekite comes and said, I slew Saul, what does David do to the Amalekite? He kills him because he touched the Lord's anointed. And David said, you don't mess with the Lord's anointed. So David has really harsh time with evil. So David has a hatred for evil, and he kills the Amalekite, and he does other things that are rather harsh that David does. He, David hates evil. By the way, does the Bible say cooperate with what is evil, put up with what is evil? Does the Bible say hate what is evil and love what is good? Hate what is evil, love what is good. I see a lot of the love of what is good around in this area, but the question, do we hate what is evil? Or do we try to tolerate it and try to cooperate, cooperate with it? We tolerate. We're going to be very tolerant people, right? So we tolerate evil. It's okay. We can handle it, evil and stuff. The Bible says hate what is evil, love what is good. By the way, that's in the New Testament. I'm sorry for jumping ahead there, but 